Hello, this is a follow-up video to the previous video I made about my exoskeleton strapping system. It's a bit of a build log for building the pieces. So if you remember in the last video, I mentioned that I was going to use these hi-fi feet, um, basically make plastic casts which will be stuck all over the uh, exoskeleton. And that's going to make um, basically a tapered peg and socket locking system for the uh, rigid pieces of Iron Man. There's the chest plate which are going to latch on all over with magnets. So, I've done the first stage here, which is to make a matching socket for these. So basically, I push one of these into some clay to uh, make the imprint of it, so we can basically fill this cavity with silicon, and then we can make a cast in plastic for a piece that looks like the middle, so it's basically the opposite of the peg. And then from that piece I will clean it up and polish it up, make sure the inside is nice and smooth, and then make further casts from that piece. The next thing I have to do is remove these um, metal pegs from the end, and then drill 10mm holes in to uh, match my magnets, which I've got in this bag, which are tiny 10mm diameter um, countersunk magnets. They've got a hole in the end. So those will be fixed eventually into the socket in the plastic version and the same with these in the plastic versions I'm going to make so that basically when the two go together the uh, magnet on the point of this and in the base of the socket match I've got north and south pole facing magnets and that's going to make a, a tapered peg and socket magnetic latch which is what's basically going to hold each piece of armour on probably with two or three of those per piece so I'm just going to use this uh, a drill press, a 10mm drill, and I'm going to attempt to drill a hole in the middle there. The metal um, spikes in there come out pretty easily, so we just need to drill a bigger hole to take the magnet before we make the casts from them. Looks pretty good I think, slightly rounded, but we'll um, drill them all to the same depth and then we'll try putting the magnets in, but I think that's going to be okay. Okay, so there's, there's two of them, the magnets seem to fit in the end fine there. Obviously they'll be screwed in eventually once I've um, made plastic casts of these. One of these went wrong and I've um, rather drilled it off centre. So that one will be scrapped and then I've got two good ones to make moulds from, along with the socket. So I've boxed off my... Um, pegs in a crude sort of box made of clay. Doesn't really matter about the outside or the, rather the inside of the box. What we're really worried about obviously um, is that it doesn't leak and that's the uh, other mold that I showed you previously. So what we're going to do is pour uh, silicon into those. Got some uh, Repsils, just cheap tin based silicon. Pour that in, make a mold and see how it turns out and then we can make the plastic casts. Okay, so I've mixed up my silicon. It's um, a red catalyst and a white base, so it should make a salmon pink. And you can tell when it's mixed properly because there's no streaks in it. Um, yes, I should be wearing gloves and I'm not, but if you do this, wear gloves. And I'm just basically gonna pour this into each mold. Air bubbles should rise upwards away from the pieces. Pour into the lowest point first, and apparently doing a high thin stream is the best thing to do. See, we need to make sure silicon goes into the holes we drilled for the magnets. If I'm careful, we should be able to let it just fill up with gravity. To make sure those are covered. Probably going to need to do another batch for the other mould. That's probably around 400 grams of silicon in that one. So that piece is uh, poured as well now, so we've got both moulds. So you can see bubbles rise away from the piece to the surface. So we'll leave that a few hours to cure up, probably uh, be demoldable later tonight or tomorrow. 
Right, so it's the next day. The uh, rubber's gone off, so we're going to turf these out and uh, see what the mould looks like. And those are the pieces stuck in the silicon, so we'll just break the clay out and uh, pop those out of there. So there's the uh, impression there, and then the other one I'll get out in a minute, and then obviously we can pour our casting resin in and make plastic copies. I'll just do the other mould and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so turf that, uh, that's the piece of clay which came out of this one, which um, basically is the negative socket for the plugs, and obviously those are the plugs. So the plan is that these are the final moulds, so I'm gonna make some plastic versions of those. And uh, this one, I'm going to make a plastic one, then I'm going to clean it up because the clay sculpt wasn't very good. Then we'll make future casts from the cleaned up plastic one. So um, I've got some smooth on here. It's actually 65D, which is meant for rotor casting, but it works fine for solid casting as well. I am wearing uh, disposable gloves and I've already poured equal parts of both of those into the two pots at the back. And I'm going to pour them into this one, mix it up probably got far too much but it's better than not enough and then we'll pour it into the moulds and make the plastic versions. The containers say to shake well before use which I have done. Um, obviously there's quite a lot of bubbles in there. But that's fine because the bubbles will rise to the surface in the moulds and they'll rise away from the, uh, the bottom which will be the finished surface when we turn this upside down or the scene take the, the plastic pieces out. So we'll just give that a good mix. Right. There we go, I'll just use the rest of that resin up in some other moulds, which I'll just go and grab. Then it should set within about 15 minutes and we'll be able to demould it. So I've demoulded those ones. Um, this is the result, which obviously looks exactly like the wooden one. Obviously the magnet still fits where it did. The plan will be to drill a hole right through the middle. The magnets have a uh, countersunk hole on them, which is um, three and a half mil. So if I get three and a half mil bolts or three mil bolts, I can put the bolt right through the bottom and that will allow it to be bolted to the frame of the exoskeleton. So those ones are fine. For a couple of other ones I poured the spare urethane into, which are the spare ears for the Iron Man helmet and that one is a pivot button. So that was just the leftover urethane and the last one is obviously the socket version. So. Let's get that out of there. There it is, so that's the plastic version of the clay. Obviously that's quite messy. It doesn't actually matter because what we're really interested in is this hole here to make sure that the uh, plug fits in, which it does. And when there's uh, a magnet in the base of this and on the, the peak of this, obviously that will clip in and it will make a, a kind of latch this one's quite crude though, so as I said before, the plan is that we're going to clean this up. Um, probably it's a bit deeper than it needs to be, and we could probably take a bit off the rim as well. So I'm gonna clean this up, 
drill a hole in the bottom for the magnet and then we'll make another mould from this and another cast in plastic and then we'll have the final moulds for the, po the plate uh, for the pegs and the final mould for the socket. Okay so I've cleaned up one of these um, which I just cast from that mould and I've also drilled a 10mm hole in the bottom where the magnet sits so um, it's not terribly clean but it's uh, better than the clay sculpt and from that I've made two moulds um, you can see the difference between the original one that came off the clay and this one is that it has the extra piece in the middle there for the magnet to sit um, I just made that by putting this in the, uh, the bottom of a beaker and obviously that's why it's smooth so pouring the silicon and using that as the mould box um, from that I've cast two more for now but I can cast as many as I want I've made two moulds because I've got two moulds for the peg so I can cast them in pairs so obviously those are identical and the peg fits in there fine so there we go so I've actually taken the height down a bit around this rim which is why that sticks out so I could um, grind these down or fill the mould with less resin to make them shallower and also the uh, socket is still quite a lot deeper than it needs to be so I could probably get the whole thing down to around an inch in depth I'd have thought if I'd trimmed the bottoms and tops off so it'd be quite low profile for attaching the armour pieces so the next thing is to get hold of some M3.5 mil bolts and drill the holes through the middle to attach the magnets and then we should find that we've got quite a good latching system so I've got a piece of armour just here which is the chest plate So what's going to happen, I've got an aluminium former in there, um, so obviously these will be bolted on the inside and the pegs will be bolted onto the exoskeleton so that they latch on and of course once it's latched the armour with gravity will try to obviously pull this way across but it'll be, be quite, uh, quite well latched in, it's a bit like those magnetic handbag um, catches that you get so that the forces are across this way and this is held in with the magnet so as long as it's as long as that remains in there then gravity can't pull the armor down towards the ground basically so that's the uh, principle of the whole thing for some of the pieces this is going to be too deep so for the biceps for instance i'm going to have to make some sort of um, magnetic hook system but the majority of the pieces will be attached with this so next time I'm going to be bolting those onto the exoskeleton and the armour pieces and hopefully mounting it all up.